so let's talk about the definition of receptacle. This was added in the 1918 National Electrical Code and remained pretty much unchanged all the way up until 2017. So let's talk about the easy part first, the part that was in the code for literally 99 years. It's a contact device for connecting an attachment plug. There you go. That it couldn't be simpler than that. A contact device for connecting an attachment plug. So let's look at a couple of different examples. I guess first we have to talk about what an attachment plug is. The attachment plug is the male part on a cord. So this would be an attachment plug, right? You put your cord into there and this is your attachment plug. You can see the male components there. Uh, this guy right here is the other half of it and it's actually listed as a cord connector so if I had a, if I had a cord in here and this is the female end that would be a cord connector but you can see on the flange that it also has provisions for mounting this into an enclosure in which case it would be a receptacle and it's actually listed as both this comes from a company called Meltrek and uh, it's a pretty slick little piece of uh, piece of equipment you use it to create a good solid connection and then you can disconnect it there and twist lock it. It makes for a very safe uh, make and break. So that's one example of a receptacle. Another example of a receptacle, of course, is just, you know, a receptacle like we have in our house. Now, this is one that you probably don't have in your house. The green dot indicates that it's hospital grade and the uh, orange triangle indicates that it is an isolated ground. Now, when you look at it, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, that's not an orange triangle, it's a green triangle. Well, inside the orange, inside the green triangle, it's an orange triangle, so it is an orange triangle. Uh, all IG receptacles have an orange triangle. Now, this is the yoke of a normal receptacle, and you can see that you've got the equipment grounding conductor terminal here, the green screw, and it's all mechanically attached, including to the part where the, uh, where the equipment ground would terminate all one component on an isolated ground system uh, if you can see and it's a little bit hard uh, in fact it's quite difficult <laughs> I pull a little piece of plastic a little film you can probably hear it that separates the equipment grounding conductor from the yoke so on the equipment on this receptacle we actually have a lack of continuity between where the uh, where the attachment plugs equipment ground would go in and the metal frame. So I could ring it out from the screw to the internal components, right? If I want to uh, measure continuity from the terminal to the screw, I would get it. But I would not get continuity from the terminal to the metal parts out here or from this terminal to the metal parts out here because it's isolated via that piece of plastic. So that's just another example of a receptacle. Okay, so that part of the definition is fairly simple. A receptacle is the place where you plug in the cord. <laughs> you know, easy enough. What changed in the 2017 code is that they added language to address a new type of technology. So it says, well, it could be a contact device for attaching an attachment plug, but it could also be a contact device uh, for connecting utilization equipment that mates with the corresponding contact device. What on earth are they talking about? Well, what they're talking about is this product here shown in the photograph. Uh, these are all receptacles. And if you can see the blown up parts, squint your eyes, maybe you can read that it is listed as a receptacle. So that is uh, a receptacle. So we'll take a closer look at some of these products here. So this is a receptacle and you would mount it up in the ceiling in a round outlet box. I don't want to call it a lighting outlet box because if you mount a receptacle in it, it's a receptacle outlet, not a lighting outlet. And if you can see, it's got terminals, uh, for, you know, just your regular terminal screws, how you would wire it. This one is the same thing without the plate, uh, but there is a uh, there is a contact device right there, a terminal screw to, uh, to tighten down the equipment ground. And then it's got line two, maybe it's a ceiling fan, and then line one and then your neutral conductor, which is indicated with the letter W. It's, it's hard to see with white on a white background. Uh, but there you go, this would be a receptacle. And the, the way you would use it is you would put it in a ceiling box, and then 
once you're done with that, hanging the luminaire, the light, only takes a matter of seconds, quite literally. So here's my outlet box and it's in the ceiling face down. I walk up with my light fixture, my luminaire, and it comes with a little bar that you can thread out and put in your junk drawer and hopefully not lose. But that bar is kind of important because it actuates the mechanical components that hold this together. So the concentric rings are the electrical portion and the big male post is the mechanical portion that holds it in. And if you can see when I actuate that lever, can you see the ball bearings moving in and out, making and breaking mechanical contact? So I would mount that in and there you go. And it's a, it's a good solid connection. You would mount that thing in your ceiling and you hang your light fixture in, in literally a matter of seconds. And then if you wanted to, you could take that out and just put it somewhere where you wouldn't lose it in case you needed to take it down. Uh, if you're an electrician, probably ought to start collecting these things because I do think you'll see these things in the near future. Uh, they're already out there. You can even get them for ceiling fans, which was uh, rather surprising when the first time I saw this. So here is my ceiling fan, as you can see, and it uses the same type of technology. So I've got the lever and it moves that ball bearing in and out, if you can see right there. Sorry, I just hit my camera. So that's an example of a receptacle. And there you go. You put it in, and it's a good solid connection. It's, uh, it's more solid than you would think. So have faith in these things. They're tested, they're listed, they go through a pretty strenuous process. So these things are safe, don't worry about it. So we know what a receptacle is, at least now we do, a little bit more than we thought it was. They made a change in the 2020 NEC to clarify how many receptacles we have on a device like the one here in the photograph. And now we're saying, look, a single receptacle is a single contact device with no others on the yoke or strap. You know, this guy right here, this would be a single receptacle, wouldn't it? A multiple receptacle is more than one on the same yoke or strap. So a duplex receptacle. How many receptacles are we looking at here? Two. This is two receptacles. And it matters. The rules change when I get to 210.21. The rules change based on whether you only have one receptacle on a circuit or multiple receptacles on a circuit. The second I install a duplex like this, I have multiple receptacles on a circuit. So it's important that we know the definition of receptacle. They made this clarification in the 2020 NEC, and then they even doubled down and added an informational note just to be sure that everybody understands that a duplex receptacle is two receptacles on one yoke or strap. So here in the photograph, uh, this is two rather old receptacles in one outlet box. This receptacle is four receptacles, right? I shouldn't say this receptacle. This piece of equipment is four receptacles. Uh, this is something that you're not gonna see anymore. They, uh, they stopped making these uh, only in the early 80s, actually, and the reason they stopped making them is because they changed the product standard on attachment plugs. If you can think about how small the, the flange around an attachment plug would have to be on the end of the cord, in order to put four of those together, that flange would barely be covering the energized blades on the attachment plug, wouldn't it? And that seems like an obvious hazard, but I'll tell you where it was particularly hazard and hazardous and, and why they had to change the UL standard for cords. Um, if, you look at, if you look it up and you search under pediatric mouth burn, uh, you, you'll find some images that you probably don't want to see. And uh, what would happen is young children would, uh, you'd have a, a cord that was connected together, right? A, a male and a female connected together. And toddlers didn't have the strength to undo those cords, but they would see that connection in a cord and it was something that seemed intriguing. So they'd grab onto it and they'd try to pull it apart and they couldn't because they didn't have the dexterity and the strength. So what would they do? They'd put it in their mouth and then pull it apart. And with the saliva and everything, they would, they would, get contact with the energized parts 
and really injure themselves and, and ultimately disfigure themselves. And, uh, and that's why sometimes we'll change the code based on product standards. Sometimes we'll change product standards on codes. And then sometimes we'll change products like this because there's no longer an audience for them but because they're, you know, we changed the, the, you can't buy cords that you would use for this receptacle. So there's no use in manufacturing the receptacle. Here's another example of four receptacles. So the definition of receptacle, uh, it's somewhat complex, you know, due to the due to the strange new equipment that we're seeing here in the 27 and 2020 edition. But what's more difficult is the definition of receptacle outlet. This is where it gets really tricky. A receptacle outlet is an outlet where one or more receptacles are installed. Now, looking at this photograph, this is very simple. We have one receptacle and we have one receptacle outlet. No question about that. Nobody's going to argue that. Let's take a look at this photograph. Here we have four receptacles, right? Two duplexes is four receptacles. Now, how many receptacle outlets is this? That can get a little bit tricky. I, I think you can easily make the argument that it's two receptacle outlets you have one outlet for each duplex. You could also make the argument that that entire box is one outlet. Now, if you were to twist my arm, and I've vacillated on this, trust me, uh, you may have heard me say something different in the past. As of the middle of October 2021, <laughs> here's my feelings on this. I think you have four receptacles and two receptacle outlets. That's what I think. Here in this photograph, down at the bottom, that is two receptacles at one receptacle outlet. But what if I split wired this? What if I cut the tab and I ran two circuits to it, which of course I could do, right? I could, I could make two different circuits to it. Then would you still call it one receptacle outlet? I think at that point, I would probably call it two receptacles and two receptacle outlets. So receptacle outlet is a little bit tricky. Fortunately, it's not a problem very often. We can debate, you know, is that a receptacle or is it a receptacle outlet? When you get into section 210.52, which tells you where you need receptacle outlets in a house, doesn't tell you where you need receptacles, says where you need receptacle outlets. Um, it works until you get to the kitchen. When you get to the kitchen, that's where things fall apart because it says, hey, in a kitchen, you need a certain number of receptacle outlets. Okay, well, if I put in a two gang box with four receptacles, how many receptacle outlets is that? That's something that you might have to chat with your inspector about. Um, it's kind of a, a difficult one and they're gonna fix it in the 2023 code but for right now, it's one of those kind of gray areas in the code. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.
be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.